It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video. Hey everybody, what's going on girl? Listen, I'm not normally here on a Friday because I'm normally out in the world. Um, But you know what? I said I was going to get this video in and I didn't have any plans. So here we are. Okay, I went and got my nails done. I feel good. Okay, I feel good. Um, Tough day, tough day. Okay. Um, But while I was seasoning my salmon and lobster... Okay, in preparation for my husband to come home from work, I listened to Tamika Scott of Escape explain her side of the story. Okay, and it's exactly what I said it was. <laughs> it's exactly what I said it was. Okay, let's 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 you know let's. Oh oh, I, I like that one. Okay, hold up, let me. <laughs> What's up? I'm still here. Okay, I'm. Still here. Shout out to Tisha Campbell. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't say still here without thinking about that damn song. Okay. I'm drinking a little Cabernet serving yawn. This is a um this is a new reserve from uh Josh. Y'all, I love Josh wine. Like and it's a good cab, girl. It's a really good dry cab. I'm a dry wine girl now. You know, I know a lot of us don't have the, the taste for dry wines. You know, you girls like your Moscatos and such, your sweet reds, you know. I don't begrudge you, girl. But now that I'm older and I feel like I'm I'm right on the right on the tips of functioning alcoholism, I have upgraded um <laughs> the taste bud the taste buds on the wineage. And when I go into the grocery store, we are primarily choosing from the top and middle. Okay, I don't know if you know about the grocery store and how the grocery stores do it, child. Okay, but the grocery stores that, you know, the wine at the bottom is the cheapest stuff. And then the next up, you about your 10, 12 round. Okay, usually at the grocery store, your top is about 20 to $30 per bottle. Okay, and at this age, that's why I'm at. All right, now listen, we might drift over to the Crown Royale. Okay, and um, just get mad old school niggerish at some point. Um... It's, it's where the night is going to take me, okay? Um, I, I have no idea. But I know I'm here with y'all right now. It's 443 of y'all in the room. Make sure y'all like the video. Don't play me like no soybean burger, okay? And we're going we gonna to go ahead and get into it. We're going to scrub through, okay? We're going to scrub through and we're going to play, you know, we're going to play at, at 1.25 and maybe eventually at 1.5. But y'all know this is from Tamika's very own uh, uh, YouTube page. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe okay subscribe to her okay um let's see we're doing July. we had a show at the beginning of may and at the show we had hired her personal assistant which was going to be our road manager can y'all hear that is that clear to everybody let me know before we continue on but as you could hear tamika is starting to explain what happened okay that unfaithful day when they got into it at the show okay Okay, come on, pop in a daily edible. Come on, Alize. Okay, listen, top shelf is life. Oh, yes. How do you drink your wine without getting headaches? You drink from the top shelf. <laughs> no, also keep that Tylenol on deck. Like an Excedrin. Excedrin and Tylenol and plenty of water. Like I'm I'm, you know, there's a kombucha nearby, okay? Because we like we like the sweetness, girl, but we don't like it in our wine. And then there's the water because ain't nobody got time. For nothing else. Okay? I'm rain. I'm versatile. I, I am too. Gemini versatile like that. I hate it dry, but now I love me a mouth bag. Have me faded and frisky. Yes, that's exactly the vibe. Okay. Oh, child, that's what I'm hoping on. It's a little low. Okay, I'm gonna bring it up. Alize. Yeah, I have never drank Alize. I just know that that's what KC and them was singing on the song. Alize. All right. So we were on stage. It was an outside show. We were on stage. They rushed us off the stage. Um, young Naya was there. Yeah, I was. They rushed us off the stage because someone was somebody shooting. was shooting. So we had to get on. So yeah. we didn't even finish our show. Someone. 
So there was a bang bang at the escape show? There was a pop pop at the escape show? Why are y'all leaving that part out of the, they left that part out of the story. Oh, she was, so we left, ran to the back. To the dressing rooms and stuff. So the dressing rooms were outside. Like, like little, what they call them, little babies? Trailers. Like no, trailers yeah. outside. So Candy and I was in the trailer. My sister so, yeah. and Ty was in the trailer. Mm -hmm. So we get to the trailer. Our door is jammed. Can't get in. Can't get in. Can nobody get in. Like a so, thousand people tried. Everybody tried. So we were out waiting for them. Somebody came with the key. It didn't work. Somebody like came an hour, with the key. Right? It didn't work. Right. Yeah. So um, an hour passed. Um, my sister leaves. But she's leaving. It, and my focus wasn't on her. The way they edited it, tried to make a big deal. Like, I was mad at her. I was mad at our business manager who left with, behind her with all our money. And the road manager left. You don't leave the artist. Mm -mm. No, you do not leave the artist. What is going on with the professionalism these days? Thank you, Queen. Okay, for the super chat, just wanted to show some love. Replay member, love you, Bonnie Girl. Thank you so much. I love you too. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate y'all. Let's continue on. You do not leave your artist, which is her personal assistant, which is still her personal assistant now. Mm. Um, so... When they left, they never came back. My sister stated that they walked her to the car because she didn't have security. We all had security. We always have security. If you even go back to the tour from 2017, we all have our own personal security. We don't go anywhere without our security. So that mean Tasha lying. Okay. Tasha's lying about not having security off rip. You're already acting fugazi with your sister off rip. Ain't nothing even happened yet. Security. We had security there. So that was a lie. She said that she didn't have security. She did. But our road manager went with her. Business manager with all the money went with her. And never came back. We were still locked out of our dressing room. So. And I got the footage on that too. So come to my page to get the footage. Oh, I have the video. Not the daughter coming through with the footage. Not the daughter coming through with the footage. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not her coming through with the footage. Come to my page because I got the footage. I'm going to look for the link when we done. I'm going to look for the link. In Vegas when you were locked out yeah. room that nobody knows. So the next day I was a little upset because the business manager never came back. Um, the road manager never came back. So I put in the group text. We have a group text where we communicate. Everybody needs to be fired. If they weren't fired, everybody needs to be fired. Are y'all are y'all hearing this clearly? I just want to make sure. With all of us and all employees. In the text, I sent out. It was very unprofessional how y'all left us yesterday. And I was talking about our road manager, which is her personal assistant now, and the business manager. I'm like, it was very unprofessional. So, you know what you do? Keep walking. You know, if you've seen the show, you see what I said. So, at the end of it, I said, y'all can just kiss my A because I was mad. So, here come my sister chiming in. I wasn't even talking to her. And she knew I wasn't talking to her. Yeah, she did leave me, but I would deal with her on another note. Not on this thread. This is the business thread. So, I was upset with our business manager and our room manager. So, my sister chimes in. Kiss my A. And then she went ranting, blah, 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 talking. First of all, if you had an eight of kids, that was a figure of speech. I would never, ever body shame my sister or any. Meaning, you ain't got no ass to kiss because you don't have a dog in this fight. I'm not talking to you. That's what she meant. Oh, my God. Hi from Jamaica. Oh, my God. I so want to come back. I so, so, so. Want to come back? I'm just saying. We're continuing on. Anybody else? I had surgery. Everybody know I had surgery. After I had my baby, um, princess, I couldn't get my body back together, honey. I went to the doctor and got it right. So how do I look body shaming anybody, especially my sister? I've been protecting my sister all my life, right or wrong. How do I look body shaming my sister? That was a bull. That so she blew that out of proportion. Never knew that she felt this way until we started filming. Okay, let's fast forward. So we fired our business manager and we fired our road manager who's now her personal assistant who don't speak to me. Her whole team walked past me. Don't say a word to me. So unprofessional, but it's cool because I know how to handle business. I reached out. She wanted to talk. I talked to her husband and I told her husband, we ain't ready to film in a month. We and her need to sit down. We need to talk. We don't need to air our business out. I mean, when I tell you, I've been protecting my sister forever. That's what I do. You protect the ones you love. She don't want to talk to me. She don't have a conversation with me. I called my mom. I said, mom, 
you know, I know you can make this happen. She and I need to sit down. She and I need to talk. Uh-uh, nothing. But when it's time to film a whole month later, it's okay mm -hmm. to talk about it in front of camera. Mm -hmm. That's the wackest thing mm -hmm. in the world. You don't do that to family. There's no way in the world that my two mm -hmm. daughters are not talking, and I'm going to let them walk around and not say that to each other. We're going to fix that. It, a week would not go by, because that's the type of parenting that I do. But my mom was like, no. Then all of a sudden, a month later, my mom calls. She's like, huh, your sister told her side of the story to the, to the TV people. I'm like, first of all, they weren't even there to record what we talked about. So why are we talking about this on TV? No one in history can say I aired out any of my business, my family business, because I protect my family. But anyway, we get to the we get to the scene. This is my sister. So we don't consider candy family, basically. All right, I just wanted to just yeah, whatever. I'm listening. And our first time. Well, let, let's bag it up. Let's bag it up all the way up. Let's bag it up. In the interim of of us um, doing this show, it was a Soul Train performance that we did. Where all of us got the memo. Mm -hmm. Our right. stylist, we, me, Candy, and Tiny had the same stylist. So my sister wanted to have her own Talk same stylist. Talk about it. Our Let's stylist talk about sent it. her stylist a picture of outfits that we were wearing, but she said she never got the memo. So she decided to wear green when she knew we was wearing cream. Like even I had a cute little red dress. I could have been rebellious and wore my little red dress on red carpet, but I was like. So now we know. So now we know. When they was being honored at the Soul Train Music Awards last year, and she showed up. In a green dress when all of the other girls was in silver. Okay, I think it was silver. Cream, silver, child, whatever. Everybody had the same color on except for her. And she got out there online and acted like she didn't know what the girls was going to wear. And I say, so you mean to tell me your sister ain't tell you what y'all was going to wear? That don't sound right. That don't, that don't ring on the side of truth. And now you telling me. She did that shit on purpose. She did that shit on purpose to make herself an adversary. To make herself look like the victim. Ha ha. Like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be in tune with the other girls. So she got the memo. She went around telling people she didn't get the memo. We didn't care. We didn't care if she wore the green dress. I thought she was marvelous in the dress. Even on, on the set, I said, hey, I said, hey, sis, I said, you look so beautiful. You know what she did? Mm -hmm. Turn. They say a word to me. So it was cool. But my mama said, oh, it was not the right time. She wasn't ready to talk to me. Like, when have I done so? Wait, wait. I just... I just want to say I believe her because that's exactly what Latasha did when they when they sat down to talk to SWV. Oh, how are you? Mm. That's what she did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So bad that you can't take a couple of it. We are celebrating 30 years in this business. This was like a height of the night. And I was so happy to see her. Just like the first day we filmed, I was so happy to see her. In my heart of hearts, I knew at that moment me and her was going to just squash whatever the beef was, whatever she felt. She could say whatever I, I felt. I could say, I really felt like we could squash the beef, but it didn't happen. But instead, when we were filming, I walked inside. I felt like I was attacked. There was a lot of stuff they didn't show. They just showed me going crazy. My daughter was there. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of stuff they didn't show. When I first walked in, my sister said something like, oh, you think you're better than people? You don't know how to talk to people? Like, she's doing all this on the TV. And I'm sitting there like, who think they better? If my friends, my family, anybody know me, that's not me. That is not who I am. I would never think I'm better than somebody. She said some other things. She read the um, text. So when I went to read something that my mom did, my mama jipped the phone out of my hand. It got to the point my mom was poking at me in front of my child. And I was like, mom, like, what are you doing? Like, I felt attacked. I was attacked. My sister say something, my mama didn't say nothing. When I say something, it was Tamika. And I'm like, why can't I explain myself? It's okay for my sister to explain herself, but I can't explain myself. It just got to the point where I just felt like, I just felt attacked. And the only way I could come out of that attack is to say, okay, you say all these lies about me on TV. Let's talk about the truth. Let's talk about you stealing money from me and I forgave I forget you. I would have never brought it up. That was years ago. I never bought it up. I never got paid back. I had to pay taxes on it. And I hid it from my husband. So guess what? My husband knows now. So he's saying, he probably like, dang, I can't even... Wait a minute. What? Did she say she had to pay taxes on $30,000 that that did not send to her correct address? Girl, when I tell you me and Latasha Scott would have been in the middle of the street on some real low vibrational shit. Me and Latasha, my sister would listen. Me and my sister have fought for less. <laughs> me and my sister have fought in the street for less bitch okay so when i tell you that me and my sister will be down to the pavement 
on some aggressive type shit. If she stole $30,000 from me while I was pregnant, pregnant, she was pregnant and her sister stole money from her. And do you know what the mama told her? Do you know what the mama told her when Tamika said, mama, she stole my money? Do you know what the mama told her? Well, you don't know what she was going through. I said, do it matter what she was going through she stole from me is you crazy i'm not disrespecting your mama tamika i'm just speaking the way i would like to okay because you know i understand you love your mama she gonna say it a million times in this video and i think i'm gonna leave it right there um we gonna you know skip through a little bit more but uh, it's real hard, girl. Like your daughter, this young one, this young one is so hard for her to be respectful right now because she don't like the way these people treating her mama. And I understand how she feel because when it all brought down to it, baby, you, you, you're not finna treat my mama like that. I just, I can't, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't. Cause he's like, okay, our taxes are going crazy right now. What's going on with taxes? I'm lying to my husband, protecting my sister. Mm. Never got the money back and had to pay taxes on the money. Only thing my mama said was, you don't know what she was going through at that time. That's what she said to me. And I, you know what, I forgot. She was pregnant. And I was pregnant. Money. I was pregnant. Money. I was pregnant with money when this happened. And this beautiful thing was in college. Yeah. So we was paying out of pocket for her college. You don't think I could have used that money? But it got swept under the rug. Just like everything that my sister does. Get swept. Girl, I would have beat. I would have beat. I would have beat. I would've beat her down to the pavement or die trying okay up under the road she's definitely my mom's favorite and i get it you know what i'm saying i love my mama i love my sister i respect my mom even in this i tell my kids what i tell y'all even be when i'm going through be respectful. be respectful respect my mama you respect my sister this is between us let me deal with this because i don't play that if i heard you going around telling everybody i disrespected my mama no i did not disrespect my mom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would never disrespect my mom. I was just voicing my opinion. The little girl that's been trying. Child, y'all always want to act like when somebody voiced their opinion, it's disrespect. But y'all going to get out of that. You are not a slave owner. You are a parent. You are not a slave owner, ma'am. I can disagree with you. I can, I can have something to say. Specifically about $30,000 that my sister stole from me as you sit in my face and act like she ain't do it. Trap in that's been dealing with this all my life finally came out and the way she came out may have seemed disrespectful but i would apologize to my mom the same way i apologized to my sister at least five or six times for the for the uh text message that yes, wasn't actually, meant for her i apologized on camera and they cut it they i don't know it. why they took that out because mm, because you was like you say like, if you feel like i body shame you i apologize i was in tears yeah when she said that but to they me, cut it. i don't even know why they didn't air it but when she said that to me it's like somebody took a dagger and went in my heart when she felt like i body shamed her like i've been protecting you and will fight to the end for my sister i've been locked up for my sister i've been kicked out of school for my sister it's a lot that has gone down i, I should be in jail right now for the rest of my life if y'all only knew the story you can hear the story so but i should be in jail it was a grace of god that whatever i what I, I was trying to do to this person who was messing with my sister did not happen because god would not let it happen but i still be in jail because i believe in taking up for my sister that's why me and candy fell out taking up for my sister i go to the end of the world i would attack whoever i need to attack to make sure family is good but you know what now i'm getting smacked in the face yeah, it's not reciprocated it's not reciprocated <laughs> Little bit is not here for it at all. Okay, it's not reciprocated. Mm. <laughs> little bit is not here for it. Not even a little bit, not even at all. She's me, I am her. She's me, I am her. Because personally, girl, did you just tell me? Did you just tell me that I was right? That's what she did when she said that. Because I told y'all, I said I felt like she been protecting Tasha this whole time. So her beef with Candy when she was going off about Candy and how Candy didn't everybody, that was because she was defending Tasha. You could tell. And I told y'all what it was between Tasha and Candy. The battle, who going to be the main vocalist, okay? And she didn't even really need to do that because people preferred her voice over Candy's a lot of the time. That's what y'all see. But now we really looking at it and it's starting to feel like, well, Tamika, was you dumbing yourself down during the singing in order for your sister to be in the forefront? Okay. Listen, hey, Dequasha, thank you for the super chat. It sounds Tasha was purposefully being strategic with her moves to get back at Tamika for being cool with Candy. Girl, it's real childish. It's real stupid. We trying to get to this money. What are you doing? 
what are you doing? We're trying to get to this paper. We're trying to make sure that we're going to be good. You out here stealing $30,000. You mean to tell me you don't need to go on tour with, with, with SWV and escape? You're lying to yourself, little sis. You're lying to yourself. But it absolutely gives, you need to go to therapy, girl. You need to go to therapy. Everybody is not attacking you. <laughs> Everybody is not attacking you, okay? Because you could tell that she felt like she the victim in this situation when you doing all of the wrong shit. Girl, it feel like you took that lady money. That's what it feel like. That's what they saying. I don't know, but that's what they saying. I don't know. I wasn't there, but that's what your sister say. And I'm inclined to believe your sister because she, she, she don't seem as shady as you. You seem real shady. Like, you know, I'm sorry. Um, right. And was the mama making her early on downplay her vocals? I wonder Tamika is not going back to poverty. I don't blame her. I know that's right. Tamika spitting out ideas about a show. Tasha scrolling through her phone. Okay. It's a shame. It's a shame. Liar, liar, like the song she sings. It's a good song. <laughs> this is so sad. This is so sad. But it really be like that. You know, it really be like that. People don't be willing to listen to reason. They always want to be a victim. They don't want to take responsibility for themselves and how they you know, can be responsible for the way people feel about them. It's not always because somebody's jealous of you. It's not always because somebody just wants to hurt you. Sometimes it's because you're an asshole and you think somebody owe you something. Tamika definitely held her vocals back to uh, stroke her sister ego. Saw them, Candy Tiny and Tamika back in November and they sounded good. Tamika step up and the mic was on. Okay, listen, and we want to hear it. Um, maybe Tasha is the jealous one. I mean, well, that's how we feel. That's how I feel. I feel like Tasha is jealous. I think she is, but she thinks everybody is jealous of her. And I think that's because that's what her mom has put in her head all of this time. Um, y'all, I was trying to see what is the second topic that I wanted to talk to y'all about. Um, I know that they've announced that Love and Marriage Huntsville is coming back on April 8th. And I am so excited because I know it's going to give this season. I feel like it's absolutely going to give. Um, but while we're here, I guess we'll talk about uh, Bishop Whitehead. If y'all feel like it, y'all let me know. Like the video, like the video. Um, or we can go over to Zonique. Okay, talking about growing up in her grandparents' house and wishing she had more time with her mama. I'm just like, hmm. Was that during the, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I don't want them people to be mad at me. But I'm going to just leave it where it's at. I'm not trying to judge nobody. But, you know, was that during the time when, when Tiny was taking arrest for, for Clifford? Is that when that was happening? I don't know. I just feel like, you know, everybody wants to talk about, like, Amber Rose and how her being on OnlyFans or being sexual online you know, it's going to make her child go through more bullying than he was already going to go through. But they don't talk about how it is when women choose to, you know, run behind these, okay, um, more so than being there for her kids. And I know it's kind of put as if this was about her career, but how old is Zonique exactly? Because I feel like, was she gone or was this during the T.I. years? <laughs> like, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. I don't know. I don't know, okay? But it definitely feels like they wasn't always home. <laughs> that, that That's what it feel like a little bit. Um, you want to talk about blue face mama? Okay, girl, we could talk about blue face mama. I don't know why y'all want to talk about, you know, the people that's down there. I don't know why you want to talk about them. You know, they, they down there and I feel like we should leave them down there, but I think I saved something somewhere. Um, I feel like I basically know what happened. So blue face mama is always online, um, arguing with herself. You know what I'm saying? So when I say arguing with herself, like she'll be on there talking about whatever has happened recently online between Blueface and Creshawn, like somebody listening to her. You know what I'm saying? And then people repost, you know what I'm saying? 
And then people will feel like, girl, like, why are you all in your, you know, why are you all in your son's business like that? You must want to, you must want to do him. You know what I'm saying? You must want to, you know, you must want the whatever, whatever. And that's nasty. And that's disgusting that people would even say such things. But when you tend to have weird ass relationships with your children, where you are way too into whatever they got going on over there or whatever, it can sometimes prompt people to wonder what type of incestuous relationship you may have. It may be covert. It may be, um, you know, just outright. It might be outright, but we don't think it's outright. We think it's more so of like a covert incestuous situation. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find on what blog was it on? Cause y'all know child they be all the blogs post the same thing the blogs be all over the place with everything girl let me see hold up oh my god not jason lee interviewing amanda sales i don't know what that's gonna do mm. that, um, i don't know i don't know i guess i'll have to watch and see uh let me see Blueface's mom has to be on the hollywood unlocked it has to be but ultimately, one night when she was like high off Percocets, I believe, um, allegedly, I believe that's what she said. But she said that her son's peewee, her son's peewee um, wasn't as big as her boyfriend's. Like she was responding to everybody who thinks that she wants her son in that way. And she was like, uh-uh, cause my boyfriend peeing bigger than my son's. And you know, we're all like, ew, ew. Like, why are you telling us this, ma'am? This is disgusting. Um, You know, why is this happening? So here's, here, here. My baby, my last born child out of my womb. My knucklehead son. Now, I didn't wash my face yet, baby. I just ran and got some coffee. I just ran and got my coffee, that's all. Ooh, that's good too. y'all say stay out his business i don't mind if you say weird stuff just don't be saying the stuff about i want to sleep with him that's just going too far okay i've got my own dick over here and it's bigger than my son dick okay so we're gonna get that all cleared up for y'all and if y'all need me to post that d <laughs> so that y'all know what i'm working with over here you know i ain't got a problem with it <laughs> I will go home and get it up for you right now and post you a nice little pic. Calm down. They can go first or last. I know how to drive and talk. I know I'll be doing this. Mm -mm. Y'all know what y'all not going to be saying? What y'all not going to ever be saying is that <laughs> I will post I will post my shit for you on here. I want to know, <laughs> first of all, I want to know how old this lady is. Second of all, I need to understand in what world do you think it's appropriate for you to tell us in response to you not wanting to smash your son that you're going to post a pic of your boyfriend's peen so we'll know it's bigger as if that matters or something. Ma'am, ma'am. I don't have a problem with women living in their sexuality. I don't. But I feel like there's a certain amount of cooth that we should have as, 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 as older women. Okay? And I'm not even as old as her. But for you to think it's appropriate for you to be online talking about posting, you know, this man's peen just to prove that it's bigger than your son's. Ma'am. Ma'am. What's going on up here? What's going on up here, ma'am? 
I don't know if you know, but that's not normal. That's not okay. That's giving you're still immature. That's giving you sound 45, you know, in the voice, but you sound 15 in the mentality, ma'am. That's not the way you should be responding to that. And I feel like people wouldn't think such terrible things about you if you were not constantly on social media trying to get attention from the ridiculous relationship between your son and that girl with no teeth over there. It's just... Uh, like... It's not right. It's not okay. I don't know who gonna make it up around her way. Okay, I don't know how the kids have thrived. I don't know how the kids have done well for themselves, child. Let's see. Say it again. Oh, okay. Why are you whispering to whispering? <coughs> Wait, she, uh, she still ain't here. Oh, that's not I know. But you look like that. I think they heard you. We didn't. Definitely didn't. He ain't say no words. That's how he know we didn't hear him. So this is where it all started off, y'all. That was posted because Creshawn wants everybody to believe that she's still pregnant. The vote is still out for me. But the mom went and posted. She holding it out too far. That belly looks six months pregnant. Tighten up. It ain't even been two months. And I'm like, first of all, why are you policing that young lady body like that, you weirdo? Like, you are such a weirdo. Why are you even like, really? How old are you? This is why they think you want your son. Because you come at his girlfriend as if you the ex-girlfriend that's waiting on him to come back and impregnate you for a second or third time. This is just real dusty and thirsty. Ma'am, you were the woman that they talk about when they blame single mothers. Like, <laughs> you the one they talk about. You her. Her is you. Because this is just ridiculous for you to even be commenting on that girl's body like that. Like, I know Creshawn is not likable for everybody. And damn sure not likable for, you know, to the mama whose son that she likes to beat up and smash online. But essentially, ma'am, for you to even be talking about that young girl's body like that is just giving, what's wrong with her? But what's wrong with her? Because something wrong with her. If she pregnant, tell her, let's pull up to the ultrasound clinic in Hollywood and I'll pay for it tomorrow. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Why does it matter to you? Why do you need her to prove to you that she's pregnant? Why? Why? Tell me why. Because from what I understand, when she was getting checks, you was going down there picking up her checks for her. So we not going to act like she getting pregnant by your son so she can trap his ass. Because we know that y'all use her for money too. So let's not do that. Let's not do that. It do look like a fool, baby. It do look like a fool, baby. But that's why you don't need to be judging nobody body. Why don't you sit down somewhere? That's why they think something wrong with you not. I don't think Creshawn pregnant, y'all. I don't. I'm going to leave her alone because I ain't got time for that. Um, That's too much for me. Um, So I'm going to just leave it where it's at. I'm not going to argue too much about it. You ain't going to hear too much about me saying nothing about it, okay? Um, Let's go ahead and talk about Nick Cannon, okay? Because I, I see that that's up here. Let me see. Did I save? I don't know if I really want to like show the advertisement because there was an advertisement for the TV show to help Nick Cannon. I think I talked about that on the Bondi Blue show with just the, you know, just the members. So we're going to pass over that. But y'all know that was just a joke, right? Y'all know that was just a joke and that Nick Cannon is doing prank wars with Kevin Hart and it's not a real show. Okay. I'm just saying, uh, Twitter user slammed D.L. Hughley after seemingly comparing Chris Rock Oscar slap to slavery. What? 
It's ironic. Some of the very people plan, uh, saying Chris Rock should get over being slapped and stop talking about it because it happened a long time ago are the same people who get mad when people say we should stop talking about slavery and get over it because it happened a long time ago. Are they white people? I don't think it's just white people saying that, DL. This was a reach. This was a reach. This was a reach. And I just want to say, I really like cannot stand the way the comedians stick together like police officers. Like, can y'all scoot back a little bit? Y'all do other shit. Y'all are not just comedians. Y'all are actors. Y'all work down to radio stations. Y'all are not just comedians. Can y'all, you know, kill the all comedians lives matter? bullshit y'all got going on right now like that doesn't even make sense dl hubley that's not the same that's not the same at all no not hey my sweet babies listen <laughs> i'm sorry that instantly brings monique into the chat okay um where monique at girl because monique told y'all that she didn't want to be in an open relationship no more because of some shit that happened with Sydney, and I, I I needed an explanation. I needed for it to make sense. Okay, here it is. Neighbors, it's no secret that Monique and her husband share just about everything, whether it be necessarily or unnecessarily. <laughs> and one more, I'm sorry, y'all. That shit was funny. <laughs> At one point, the two admitted to sharing each other with other people. But according to People Magazine, mag uh, Child mag <laughs> Magazine, Magazine, Monique says her open marriage days are over. Life began to happen. I began to see a strength I had never seen before. He loved me at my worst. I didn't want to sacrifice that just for a lay. So I grew out of that, she explained. Monique says people didn't understand what she meant by open marriage. They thought it was about swinging and orgies. And then there were individuals who are vehement about God and they were bringing God into their opinions, she said at the time. People lost their minds and the criticism has never let up. Child, our criticism of you and Sydney is not about it being an open marriage, girl. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. <laughs> like, that's what should happen. That's normally what happens when you pay all of the bills. Like, the people let you do what you want to do. Um, I'm just saying, Monique, like, yikes. Okay. Monique says it was her idea, but her husband, oh, my <laughs> It was her idea, but her husband showed her he could have his fun too. Sydney had this one thing he had to teach me, and that was reciprocity. He said, if you can have that, it's only fair that I could have it too. I wanted to continue to see the gentleman that I was seeing, and I felt comfortable telling my best friend Hicks. I'm grateful he taught me I had to play fair. Now, see, here's the thing, Monique. This is the thing that fucked my head up about this whole thing. Why did you not think from the beginning that if you were going to do you, that he was going to do him? Why didn't you think that from the very beginning? I do feel like people's relationships go through like stages and you could want to have an open relationship at one point. And then at another point, you may not want to have a, a open relationship and you may want to lock that shit up. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's the prerogative of the people in a relationship. I'm not judging from that standpoint at all. Um... But I also feel like it's kind of unrealistic for Monique to even think from the beginning that he wasn't going to go and do his own thing too. But I understand what she mean, though. Don't be confused. What she's saying is they had an open marriage and she was doing what she wanted to do. And I guess it wasn't really because it was something that he wanted. And so he went out and did that to show her, okay, you want me to do this? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. You ain't going to like it when I do it. And so that's what he did. He went and did what he wanted to do. And eventually, I guess, it became more of a nuisance to her than a benefit. And then she was like, oh, well, I guess I just won't be with you then, nigga. <laughs> I mean, listen, I can't judge because it's a long-term relationship. The shit happens. But I'm going to just say I don't know why from the beginning she didn't understand that that was going to be a possibility. Maybe she just didn't understand what it was going to feel like. And that's reasonable, too. But, child, Monique and Sydney always got us looking at them sideways no matter what. And it's really because she called him daddy at every turn and let him run her business in some ways that we feel like may not be 
that smart. But that's them people relationships. So I really don't have nothing to say besides, girl, why you thought that? <laughs> Nikeisha, thank you. So, I think it's Nikeisha. Thank you so much for the super chat, boo. Listen, I'm growing my hair out right now so I can get my hair relocked. Okay? I'm trying to grow my hair out, y'all. I'm trying to be patient. Thank you for the super chat. <sighs> okay, listen, I feel like that's what the $49.99, you know, deserved. Anyway, you had to have an actress. You had to have been an uh, actress in a past life. So anime. <laughs> Girl, I have. I, I was an actress. Okay? I was Joan of Arc in my formal life. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, that's what I wanted to be. Um, Monique in Sydney is very odd. They are. Every time she has a career leap, she does something like this. I think she being real, but I also think that Monique is one of those people that knows how to manipulate situations. It's giving friends with benefits, not marriage. Child, no, it's giving marriage. <laughs> I don't know whose marriages y'all have seen, but I have seen many a marriage. And I'm talking about marriages that span, you know, the 30-year shit. And everybody has done their shit at one point or another in those marriages. Like, I'm just saying. And that's what this sounds like to me. As much as people profess polygamy and open relationship, monogamy is the goal, but... But people lack self-control. Yes, people do lack self-control. Um, I personally feel like, you know, monogamy is great if that's what you want. <laughs> if that's what you want. There, there are times, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, I feel like a whole full-ass life. Jesus Christ, like, it's 2023, it's real hard <laughs> to imagine, like, that whole, like, 70 years with just that one person, huh? Okay, good luck with that. People do open marriages all wrong. That's why you don't hop in that pot if you can't take the heat. This is true. You have to be very open and honest, and you have to be fair um, with the way you handle it. I know a lot of people, um, you know, these days that are in poly relationships. I do. And a lot of it is communication. A lot of it is blunt honesty. A lot of it is men stepping out of their ego. A lot of it is women having to be secure in themselves in order to not question their placement just because, you know, of whatever outside situation is. So, yeah, I mean, listen, I know a lot of marriages that have done this, um, <laughs> so I feel like it's very much given marriage. I feel like people just lie all the time. <laughs> Please, baby phase, uh, phases, baby phases. Exactly. I, I do believe that marriage has its phases. I do. Um, it's just a matter of if you're going to fuck with the person through the phases. If you're going to fuck with them through the phases, then you get to the end of it and everybody feels like they did something special, like Rashida and Kirk over there. Child, Rashida and Kirk post today trying to let us know something. Okay, marriage is hard, okay, and you make what of it which you can and which you must. But I swear for God, I don't want to be Rashida and Kirk. I'm mad Kirk grew his hair back. I said, Kirk, what you growing your hair back for? What you growing your hair back for, Kirk? No marriage, not uh, no marriage for me, not signing a contract to stay in a romantic relationship. No way. I'm gonna tell you, um, listen. If this don't work out, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> I'm telling you. I hope me and this nigga stay together forever. Because if we don't, I'm not doing this again. Okay? Mm-mm. Not at all. We not. Stop. The book stops here. Okay? Um. So let's go ahead and get into the last topic. And then I'm going to get on out of here. It's 775 people in here. I wish y'all liked the video. Okay? All right. Through my 20s, I kind of played like a lot of the pretty girl love interest or the sexy girl, whatever. Then, you know, at a certain point, I was like, hi, guys, I can do so much more than that. And the attitude was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Just be pretty. Right, what right. Get? Having to learn, you know, how to break out of that box without letting it make me bitter or upset. You hear other people's experiences and, and someone will discredit yours because they think that, oh, well, that buys you certain privileges. But it also does work against you at times as well. Somebody who's in a position of power is attracted to you yeah. and 
And it's like, you know, you're like, ah, if I just like shut this down a certain kind of way, then they don't want to work with you or they want to say that you're this, you're that. And yeah. so then you kind of have to, you know, kind of like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I just totally, that went over my head. In a lot of ways it has worked for me. Yeah. And then there's been ways where it's worked against me, which has been a challenge, but I just try not to complain about anything. I'm yeah. like, look, something comes with it, no matter what side of the spectrum or no matter how you're experiencing it, nothing that we're trying to pursue is just easy. Through my twenties, <laughs> Okay. I thought that was a really dope conversation that she was having. I'm going to pull up. Through my because I really do feel like people always talk about pretty privilege, but they don't talk about the bad parts of it. And the bad parts of it is not being taken seriously when you want to do some real acting. Like, I feel like this was such a real thing to say because I remember, do you know the only thing that made them really take Holly Berry say, uh, seriously? Monsters Ball. Monsters Ball made people take Holly Berry seriously. And it, she had to be stripped down. She had to be ugly. And she had to f Billy Bob Thornton. She didn't really. But. She had to give the, you know, the illusion that she was getting banged out by nasty looking, decrepit Billy Bob Thornton. You know what I'm saying? So it, it absolutely gives you have to do a lot of like reverse shit with the with the pretty privilege. You have to strip yourself bare in order for people to take you seriously, specifically in acting, singing things where people will just take your looks and propel you forward off that alone. But when you're really trying to do real work, like, for instance, Megan Good's pretty privilege would not get her on Broadway. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter how pretty she is. It's not going to get her to Broadway. Okay. She's going to actually have to have talent because can't nobody see your face that good all the way from the back. Okay. In a theater. All right. Hood Hilla. Oh, I remember her. Hood Hilla was just tweeting and posting about pretty privilege. It has its negatives too. It does. It's a strong illusion. Absolutely. It was definitely Monsters Ball. Because she, yeah, she won the Oscar for that. Damn the patriarchy. And that's another thing. Like, you damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, yeah, y'all. I thought, and she said something else. There was something else that she said um, in an interview, too, about marriage, I thought. And I wanted to hear her opinion on that. But I do not see it. I think I'm going to go back. I think I'm going to go back on that same post. Y'all, I be thinking I save stuff. Speaking of acting, speaking of acting, I'm going to talk about this because I really, I really just have to. Did y'all see Carisha in BMF? Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I don't watch BMF. And BMF often looks like a Tubi show to me. Like continuity errors out the yin-yang. Just continuity errors all over the place. Don't make no sense. And now y'all didn't hire the young Miami. Sorry, y'all. Y'all didn't hire the young Miami to come on to the show. And she don't know how to act. <laughs> she don't know how to act. And everybody like, you know, oh, but you hating. No, we not hating. You don't know how to act. She, <laughs> I'm not going to play the clip because it's going to be a copyright. But she was like... Oh, what you forgot your key? And then he come through the door and she like, what's going on, Meech? And, you know, he like, we was at the club and they started shooting. And she was like, what? And she grabbed the necklace and she was like, I want whoever did this to pay for it. It was just like, wait, what? I want whoever did this to pay for it. I was just like, who? agreed to this who agreed to this i'm gonna find it and then i'm gonna play it but i'm just gonna play the sound and not the video because i feel like you could just hear this shit and that's good enough you could hear it and it's good enough hold up let me <laughs> let me find it girl wait a minute let let me find it because it's in here somewhere it's in here somewhere, girl, okay? I just kind of feel like they got real actresses out there that's trying to work. You know what I'm saying? 
that have gone through years and years of working at, at being an actress. And, you know, they, they've just done their due diligence and they've done all of the things. And y'all will still go and hire somebody like Young Miami for a gig like this when she can't really act. And I feel like I'm not hating on Young Miami because I want sis to get all the opportunities she can get. But damn, I need her to actually take the acting classes first. Y'all don't even make the bitches take the acting classes no more. I'm about to play it. Y'all ready? How you drunk? If it got an elevated code? <laughs> no, I'm laughing at how she say elevated Bitch, code. where's my husband? that part right there terrible y'all saw what she when she went that was terrible that was terrible there was no she looked like she was about to laugh when she smacked him. <laughs> what the fuck? There was no expression. Look how she smacked him. <laughs> Just a look. I want whoever did this to pay. I want whoever did this to pay. There's no real emotion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bitch. You, let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Get the fuck out of here. That's one thing she know how to do, curse somebody out. She did good in you people. You mean for the couple of seconds we saw her playing herself? Oh, all right. This how you supposed to do it. This how you drunk? You drunk? What you forgot the elevator call? You <laughs> Then she come in. Beach, where's my husband? Just shooting us out too. I'm so sorry. But please excuse me. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Okay then. Next. I'm just saying, she ain't even do that. She ain't even do that. I, I just gave you the scene right there. She ain't even give you that. Bitch, you were supposed to sit in that pain until that shit welled up inside of you. I did that for y'all in like one minute and the tears was about to come out. I don't know what she was doing. <sighs> There's somebody out there that could act, you know, that's all. I don't, I don't see a problem with her getting acting roles. It's just not ones that require real acting. <laughs> Play yourself like you did in you people. Meech can't act either. He has the same tone no matter what scene. He do. It's like a sullen teenager no matter what. She played herself in you people. This is dramatic acting. A no go. Exactly. Exactly. I can say Cash Doll done better than I expected. She did. She did do better than I expected. Okay. Oh, I watched BMF. I didn't see this episode. <laughs> you better show it. Listen. I'm just saying. Like, she ain't give nothing. She didn't give nothing. Listen, y'all could dislike my video all y'all want to, bitch. I could act. <laughs> I went to school for it. Okay? I went to school for it. All right? Thank you so much, Ariel Aesthetic, for the super chat. Happy Friday. Having a cocktail and watching you at home. At a home, at my home, my own. Yes, listen, I love my 30s. Come through, come through. I love it. Congratulations, love. Okay, listen, I love being at my house that I own, girl. Listen, it's real comfortable, okay? Especially when we get this new mattress. It's going to be extra comfortable. Listen, I'm putting it out there. I want to be invited to the, to the Black Women Essence brunch or whatever they be doing I, I need to be invited to this okay y'all need to go on and send me out an invitation so i can come to this next year because i feel like i need to be in the room okay that's how i feel anyway 
that's all I got, y'all. That was a hot little hour for y'all. Right quick, right fast. 949 people in the room. Make sure y'all like the video. I appreciate y'all for coming through. I'ma check my cash app, CC. Thank you in advance. I appreciate y'all so very, very much for coming through tonight. I hope y'all enjoyed. For the rest of the month, I'll be throwing these out to y'all as much as I possibly can. Become a member, okay? Become a member because the Bondi Blue Show lives are normally members only only okay you can go to my homepage on youtube you can click that patreon link in the description box or you can go to bondybluesshow.com and become a member there either way girl i'm done i hope y'all enjoyed have a good rest of y'all weekend and i'll fool with y'all later comment and let me know what do y'all want to see for the next now that we're grown all right peace out